A lot of guys get real bent out of shape. I don't know what it is with guitar players, but we'll, we'll hear the fancy names about modes, Dorian and Phrygian and Aeolian, and it just sounds so exotic, doesn't it? It sounds like if that was the key to me playing better, it must be something esoteric like that. It's got to have a fancy name that's hard to understand, and if only I could get the key to that. If only I could understand these mythical things, then that would be the, you know, the end all be all. I'd be, you know, the greatest soloist in the world. Well, well, I play guitar for a living. Um, modes are an important thing to know. Uh, are they the holy grail of guitar knowledge? Uh, I don't know about that, but they are a helpful thing to know. And we haven't talked about them. I went back through my notes. We haven't talked about these guys in like three or four years. So I thought it'd be just a good time to refresh our memory of what modes are and what, uh, what are some of the things that you can do with them. So take a look at the, uh, the sheet that I gave you for the PDF. So let's say the thing at the top says modes and easier way. A lot of times you'll look in these books and they will give you all sorts of formulas for modes. It's one, two, flat three, flat five, sharp six, whatever. And you end up with all of these different formulas for a mode. Well, who has time for that? Uh, you know, I, I could walk away from that and you think you have to learn all of those in 12 different keys. Oh my goodness, that's like a gazillion different permutations. Who could know all this sort of stuff? Okay, first of all, don't try and learn them that way. Here's, here's what modes are and here's an easier way to think about them. A mode is a version of a scale. Okay, so we, we're typically familiar with a major scale. If I was in C, it would be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you have the octave, okay? So those collection of notes. Now it's a collection of whole, sto whole steps and half steps, two whole steps and a half step, whole step and a half step, and then two whole steps and a half step. So there's, there's, uh, there's a collection of, uh, of whole steps and half step relationships there, two holes and a half, three holes and a half. Don't worry about all that sort of stuff. But then that is all, you can also think of that as a mode, okay, as a certain combination of notes. Well, that first combination of notes is one way to look at it, C to C. But that C major scale, you know, continues, it's kind of like a number line, it continues in either direction. So, you know, if I, well, I can, you know, keep going down as far as it'll go, and I'm still in the key of C. I'm just, you know, at an E, E, F, G, A, B, C. There I started. And I can keep going. So it kind of goes, just realize a scale is not just one little piece. It actually is that relationship of notes either way. Okay? So with that thought in mind, what are modes? All right. So let's get into them. If someone turns to you and says, hey, man, I need you to solo in D Dorian mode. Okay? Well, it's, that's a minor mode, and uh, they have exotic names. I don't know how they were named this, but the names are Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and then, uh, then you're back to Ionian again. Okay. All right. Don't worry about all the names. First of all, don't worry about all the names. Here's the deal with those. If I go from C of my C major scale to C to C, okay? And that relationships of notes in the key of C, so no sharps or flats. That is called an Ionian mode, or we would better know that as a, as a major scale. Now, but if I go from D, I'm still in the key of C, but I'm just gonna start on a D note, and I'm gonna go up to the next D note. Now, I'm still in the key of C, I'm just, instead of going from C to C, I'm gonna go from D to D, but I'm still in the key of C. Okay. So I built the scale off of the second step of the major scale. Do you see what I did there? So I'm in the key of C, but instead of starting on a C, I started on a D and went from D to D. Okay, that relationship of tones going from the second of a scale up to the second of a scale gives us a different collection of, of half steps and whole steps. But it's still related to the original key of C. But if I start on the second step, that's called the Dorian mode. 
it's a minor sounding mode, okay? So if I had a, a, a D minor chord, let me just kind of get a D minor groove going here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna play a C scale, but I'm gonna start on the, uh, on the D. Right up the C scale. Okay, that's a cool sound. Okay, a cool little a cool little way of looking at it. Okay, so all I did was take that same key of C and I started on the second step. Second step equals a Dorian mode. Okay. Now, well, Steve, can you do that with other steps? You bet. Let's start on the third step of the scale. So I'm still in the key of C. I'm going to start on the third step. I'm going to start on an E. Still in the key of C. I'm just going to go from E to E. That's called Phrygian. Okay? That's the third. That's another minor mode, but it's a different way of doing it. It's a little bit different sounding to the ear. So let me get an E minor groove going. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now I'm going to play in the Phrygian mode. It's going to sound a little bit different. What are you playing there? Are you thinking Phrygian mode? No. No. That's too much work to think in the Phrygian mode. I'm thinking in the key of C, and I'm just emphasizing the E notes, the E, G, B notes. But I'm playing in the key of C. I'm not thinking Phrygian mode. That's too much effort. I'm just thinking in the key of C. So all you have to do is kind of memorize your keys and these scale relationships. So one is the major scale. If I start from one to one, if I go from two to two, that's, what did we call it? Dorian. If I went from three to three in the key of C, it would be E to E, that's Phrygian. Now, if I went to, from four to four, starting on an F and ending on an F, but I'm still in the key of C, that would be a, something that sounds like this. It's a major sounding sound to, but it's got a little bit of um, that flat five in there really, really gives it kind of a spaciness to it. So let's hear how Phrygian sounds. So I'm going to play kind of an F major tonality and then I'll play, uh, uh, excuse me, Lydian over the top of that. One, two, three, four. So now I'm, I'm still in the key of C, but I'm going to play an F scale. I'm still in the key of C. F, G, A, B natural, C, D, E, F. kind of, it doesn't sound really uh, the typical major seventh. It's got a little bit of a, a, a weirdness to it. That's that B natural that's, that's happening in there. I'm playing in the Lydian mode. It sounds very open. It's a very open sounding uh, major type uh, sound to it. That's Lydian, okay? Again, I'm in the key of C and I start on the fourth step. Ionian, that's the major scale. Second step, Dorian. That's the Dorian mode, minor sounding mode. Three, if I went from E to E, 
that's Phrygian on the third step. If I start on the fourth step, that's F to F. That's, uh, what did I say, Lydian. Okay, so now the next one, if I go from G to G, okay, I'm still in the key of C, so it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, not a major scale in G. This is, I'm still in the key of C, so there'd be an F natural in there. That's called a Mixolydian, okay, just to confuse you, another complex name. Don't get lost in all the names, although they do sound cool. Mixolydian. That hat kind of has this flatted seventh, almost a bluesy sound to it. All right, so let me play kind of a G uh, groove, and we'll hear what a Mixolydian sounds like, okay? So let me get this going. One, two, go one, two, three, four. play in the mixolydian mode. Here how it kind of sounds a little bluesy, almost kind of has a little bit of a bluesy tone to it. That's mixolydian because of that flatted fifth in there, okay? My guitar is getting a little out of tune here. Let me just check that with all these hot lights we've been under. So, can you remember the names of them? First one, Ionian, major scale. Second is Dorian. If I build it off of the third step of the scale, that's Phrygian. If I build it off of the fourth step of the scale, that is Lydian. If I do the fifth step of the scale, that is Mixolydian. Okay, well, I got two more. If I go from A to A, the sixth step of a C major scale, up to the next sixth step, that's called Aeolian, okay? Aeolian, A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. It's an Aeolian relationship of notes. It's a minor, another minor sounding one. Okay, so if I get an A minor groove, one, two, A minor groove. very normal. This one doesn't even really sound, you know, outside at all. Because this, that's kind of the relative minor of C major. Okay, so that one sounds, that one sounds pretty normal. I'm just going from an A to an A, but I'm in the key of C. The last one is called Locrian. If I start on a B, and go all the way up to the next B. That is called a Locrian scale. Don't worry too much about it. You will hardly ever use it. So, in fact, I can almost guarantee you in 99.9% .9 of your playing, you will never use that scale. Eh, for some jazz situations, you can do a, uh, some sub chord substitution stuff with it. And it's kind of cool. But for really most playing, you're, you're never going to use that one. That's Locrian. goes from 7 to 7. All right, so there, there you go. There are the seven modes. Now, here's the great thing about them. I don't need to relate all of those things to keep track of all those different formulas. I just relate their scale position to what key we're in. Okay, so let's say, hey, I want to play in, let's say, I want to be in the A Dorian mode. A Dorian mode. Okay, so here's what you need to do. It's giving you two bits of information. A, it's telling you that's where it wants it to start, and Dorian. Well, Dorian, what does that start on? That's the, the Dorian starts on the second part of the scale. So you have to do a little bit of musical math. In what scale is A the second step? Okay, so think it out. In what scale is A the second step? Okay, the answer is the key of G, okay, right? G, if I'm in the key of G, A is the second step. So if I wanted to play in the A Dorian mode, I would just solo around in the key of G all night long, okay? And they would, it, would work out, it would work out right. So I'm relating it to the scale degree where it's coming from and the key. Let's do another one. 
So if I said to you, hey, I want you to play in the, uh, let's say, E-flat. I want an E-flat Lydian scale. Oh, gosh, what on earth could that be? E-flat Lydian. Well, you got to think, Lydian, which scale degree is the Lydian scale? What scale degree does that start with? Well, that's four, okay? Ionian is one, Dorian is two, Phrygian is three, uh, 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 Lydian is four. So in what key is, uh, what did I say, E-flat, E-flat Lydian? Uh, in what key is E-flat the fourth step? So you got to do, do a little bit of musical math, figuring out where, uh, what scale you would need to use. Well, I'll give you the answer, a B-flat scale B flat, C, D, E flat. I could play in the key of B flat all night long, and I over it with their wanting me to sound E flat Lydian. Okay, so it just gives me some different options. Let's practice one more time. Are you getting this? I'm seeing nobody is answering. Oh, I see a couple of answers there. There you go. Um, there's such a delay here that uh, it's hard to uh, do question and answer things here. That's that's uh, funny, but. Uh, let's try one more. Okay, so if I said to you, hey, we're gonna, I want you to play in D, um, D Aeolian. D Aeolian. Okay, so you got to think to yourself, what key, Aeolian, is, starts on the sixth step of the scale. So what key has a D for the sixth step? Can anyone answer that? What key has D as the sixth step, okay? The answer is F major. Thanks, John, I got your, you're there first. F major, F, let's spell the F major scale, see if, you, see if John's right, he could be wrong here. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, that's right. So if I wanna play a D Aeolian scale, I would play in um, F major, in, in the key of F, key major. D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. All right, so basically I've taken you on this roundabout understanding of how you can relate modes to keys and their placement in the scale. So the key ideas that I want you to think about are what mode goes with what scale step. Major scale is one to one, okay? Two to two is Dorian, three to three is Phrygian, four to four, if I start on the fourth step of any key and go to that, it's octave, it's Lydian, fifth step, Mixolydian, sixth step, Aeolian, seventh step, you'll never use it, Locrian. I mean, you will use it in some jazz settings. Okay, so that's all theoretical grade and you can kind of understand where I'm going with that. But Steve, what on earth does it have to do with how I'm soloing and how I approach a, a, uh, a soloing situation. All right, so let's talk about that for a second. You gotta think, three of these are major sounding, okay? The one, the major scale, if I start on one, that's major sounding. The fourth step, the, the Lydian mode, that's major sounding. And the fifth step, Mixolydian, those are all major sounding modes, okay? So those are options when I'm trying to solo over a major chord. Now, if it's a minor chord, there's three of those that are minor. The one that starts on the second, which is Dorian, the one that starts on the third, which is um, Phrygian, and the one that starts on the sixth, which is Aeolian. So I've got two major, three major ones I could, options I can use, or I could go um, three minor ones. All right, hang on, this is where we're going. Some of these overlap. So if I said, hey, solo over an A minor chord. Well, A minor appears in a lot of different keys. In the key of G, the A minor is the two chord. So if I wanted to solo over an A minor, but I'm in the key of G, I would be thinking Dorian. But an A minor is also in the key of F um, as the third step. So if I wanted to solo over an A minor chord in the key of F, I would be thinking Phrygian. Hey, but A minor is also in the key of C. And if I wanted to th think of it in the key of C, I would be thinking of it in uh, um, Aeolian. All right, so I give you 
on that third page of this, I show the differences in the scales. Okay, so an A Dorian mode scale in the key of G, okay. Kind of has that F sharp in there. If I wanted to do it in the Phrygian, it's got the B flat in there. Uh, what am I going to, A? Okay. If I wanted to think of it in the Aeolian mode, I'm in the key of C. All right, so let's get an A minor groove going on and see if you can hear the differences of how these different modes sound. So let me get an A minor groove going. One, two, three, four. So here's my A minor groove. Well, what key are we in? Are we in the key of G? Am I in the key of F? Am I in the key of, of, of C? Am I, I could just solo in A minor and use my A minor pentatonic and avoid all of this. Okay, so that's cool at all. But if I wanted to think about it in the key of G, I could just solo in the key of G over this A minor chord. It's that F sharp that gives it this strange quality to it. That's that Dorian sound. Okay, well let's say let's let me just take it up to the last one. Let's say I wanted to think of it in the key of C and think of it as an A as an A Aeolian. what Aeolian sounds like. Let me refresh your memory on what Dorian sounds like in the key of G. Let me go back to Aeolian in the key of C. There's also one more, a lesser used one, which would be Phrygian. So I would be thinking of it in the key of F, okay? Still A minor going. Almost sounds a little bit of Mediterranean, kind of Middle Eastern. So when I want to get that sound, I can slip into Phrygian mode. your memory again. Here's Dorian in the key of G. Here's Phrygian on the third step in the key of F. Sounds kind of Middle Eastern, a little, little uh, Mediterranean. Let me go to the key of A minor in the key of C. More, this is going to sound more normal. So I have so many different options now instead of just playing my A minor pentatonic. Maybe I'll throw in a blues note. That's cool, in some situations you're gonna to need to do that. But this just gives you another option. So you see, you have some options. It gives you a wider tonality base that you can go from. All right, 
Whew, we have covered a lot of ground in the last 20 minutes or so with modes. So that's the deal with modes. Don't go out and buy some schmucks book that looks, you open it up, it looks like a chemistry book with all of these formulas and you have to memorize, oh my goodness, what in the key of, I have to play is an F sharp Phrygian, an F sharp Phrygian scale, oh my goodness, it's, it's no human can understand it. Think, what did, what did Uncle Steve teach you? Phrygian, that's the third step. In what key is F sharp the third step? I'll give you the answer, the key of D, D, E, F sharp. All I have to do is play in the key of D all night long, and I will be in the Phrygian, I'm playing an F sharp Phrygian. Man, how can you solo an F sharp Phrygian? I just, I think of it in the key of D, okay? So that's, that's how it goes. So anyway, that's the scoop with that. That's enough of me blathering on. Let's give something away. Um, I wanted to give away, um, we had a good friend, Bill Cooley is, um, um, he's the, I believe he's the good acoustic guitar player for Trisha Yearwood and has been for many, many years. And uh, this is Bill, great fingerstyle player and flat picking player. He was on our show, I don't know, about six, seven months ago. And he left a few of his CDs and autographed one. So the winner of this one is Maria, Maria Calfa de Paul. Uh, Maria, our good friend Maria, you have just won this. Send me, send me your information, Maria, service at Mighty Oak Music, and we will get this out to you. I hope that has cleared up some, some confusion you may have had with modes. So it's a great, it's just another tool in your tool belt to have when you're, when you're soloing. All right, let's talk about some of the resources that we have for this month. Um, we've been doing some, some uh, uh, resources with Robin Ford. You know, when I was... Uh, a young feller, um, way too many years ago, I had bought a Robin Ford DVD. It was one of the most helpful DVDs of him instructing. As far as learn, going outside of just normal blues changes, instead of just playing if you're tired of your blues just sounding the same all the time, Robin Ford was the one that kind of really woke me up into different options that you can play a lot of this stuff that we're even talking about tonight. But this is uh, two great DVDs, one that he has on the art of blues rhythm, and the other one is the art of blues soloing. It's like three hours of content of him uh, teaching, just a regular clinic situation. It's got examples, a PDF with examples and, and whatnot. I think it's like 80 pages of PDF. Everything's written out. This is great. These are two great resources. We've got that going actually for just the next week. By the end of this weekend, we're gonna, that'll be the end of them. And there's really only a, so many. I think there's only 30 of them left. So if you're interested in getting these, uh, check them out at the links that the guys are um, putting up there. The Robin Ford Blues Bundle. What do we have them for? 55 bucks. we got them for, on for them. The other one that has been really great is this little book that we've got going on for the next week or so. We'll stop it this weekend. 12 Bar Blues, The Complete Guide for Guitar. This is an easy-to-read resource of just different style, styles. If you're kind of a beginner, intermediate blues player, this is going to be a great resource for you to check out. It comes on with online examples, and it goes through different blues styles, Chicago, minor blues, bebop, jazz stuff, um, swing, shuffle, boogie-woogie, things like that. And it comes with full band tracks that come along with this. It's cheap, too. What do we have it for? I think it's like 15 18 bucks, something like that. So if you're interested, this is a good resource that I found, too. So uh, check those out. We'll have those up for another uh, few days and then we will uh, be done with that. Um, what else do I need to announce? Oh, our guitar conference. We have our summer guitar conference. Hey, we got another big confirmation this week. Uh, Phil Kagi, the master himself, uh, legendary fingerstyle guitar player, is gonna be back with us again for our Guitar Gathering 2019. If you are interested in um, being a part of that conference, you can go to guitargathering2019.com We've got Phil Kagey lined up. We've got Johnny Highland and his band and several other secret guests that I am uh, quietly working on. And there's workshops. There is night concerts. It is an absolute blast. We hold it right here in Nashville. And we usually, on the last day, we kind of take everybody around and see some sights around Nashville and some great musical things. If you're interested in getting out of your normal daily routine, 
Uh, June 12th through the 15th is the conference this year. Um, hey, consider coming down here to Nashville with us, and uh, we'll put you, have some world-class training, workshops. It's four days to really boost up your skills. So check that out if you're interested. Uh, one of the most economical conferences that you can find. We are voted um, one of the best guitar conferences by Acoustic Guitar Magazine a few years ago. So we won the award for that. The other one that we have is our Fall Fingerstyle Retreat, uh, which is in the fall. I think it's October 31st through November 2nd this coming year. And uh, we've got international fingerstyle uh, guitarist uh, Don Ross is going to be with us, uh, the only guitarist in history to have won the fingerstyle championship twice. And he is drop dead amazing. He's going to be here with us. We only have really about 10 slots left if you're interested in being part of the fall fingerstyle retreat. That will most certainly sell out here within the next couple of months. So if you're interested, check that one out. That one's all fun. We all come, we stay together, we, we eat together. It's a wonderful lodge sort of situation, and it's a lot of fun. So that's, that's all of that. And check out, check out our store for other things. We've got helpful books. I've got some gear stuff on there. We've got, we've got um, hats like this. We've got uh, um, mugs. There's a few mugs left. We've got... Uh, Socks. My wife has been stocking us up on musical socks. So if you're looking for guitar socks, we've got a few of those in the, in the store as well. We were at NAM last week in Los Angeles, uh, the biggest worldwide music convention, and it was ridiculous. It was loud. We saw a lot of our good friends there. I you know, interviewed Rick Vito from Fleetwood Mac there and Trevor Gordon Hall, wonderful fingerstyle guitar player, Tim May. Um, wonderful flat picking player, uh, Daniel Donato. Uh, we saw all the new guitars by everybody from Fender to Taylor to, to Bourgeois and Maiden. Everybody was there. And it was uh, lots of fun and completely exhausting at the same time. So we had a great time out at NAMM. And then I went to uh, one of our guitar family, uh, works for Cirque du Soleil. He, he had gotten us some tickets for a couple of Cirque du Soleil shows. And I interviewed a fascinating guy. I'll put the interview up in the next day or two. Bruce, Bruce Rickard, the current world record holder for uh, most live performances of any male musician living. Wow. Uh, he, we had a great interview. He, he works for one of the Cirque du Soleil shows, been doing that gig for 24 years. Never missed a show. If you are one of the 13 or 15 million people that has seen the Miss Dare show, uh, at the uh, uh, Mirage, um, I think it was at the Mirage. No, it may have been at, uh, oh, was it the other one? I forget the name of it. Anyway, it's the Mystere Show. It's the longest running Cirque du Soleil show. He's never missed a performance. He, he, he looked on his phone. He said, yeah, tonight's performances are going to be the 11,471st and 11,472nd. He has done 11,000 consecutive shows. And he was a great guy. He was just a, a great guy. So I'm anxious to... Uh, Get to, uh, get to know him a little bit better. All right, let me answer a couple of questions here, and then I want to talk to you quickly about some uh, ideas for uh, changing up your fills a little bit. Um, Bill is asking, can you change a song um, by, use a, by using a mode, say Amazing Grace? Um, yes, you can by harmonizing it differently. It is uh, a little bit trickier to do things that are m longer chord progression and more complicated chord progressions, especially something that would be as tonal as Amazing Grace. If you have, uh, working with modes is a little bit better when you have long periods of time on a static chord, okay? So like right there, I was just giving you an A minor for, you know, 10 bars or something like that. Those are good ways to, to um, slip into modal playing a little bit. And it's real good for your ear to kind of hear when players do that. As soon as you start listening to it a little bit more, you can go, oh, yeah, he's playing in the, in the uh, Dorian mode. And it's a little bit, it just gives you different options. So, but harmonizing a whole song with that would get a little complicated because um, not all the chords would work, because not all the chords are in the same keys in the same relationship, even though some of them do overlap. Um, good question on that. All right, um, let's see. Thrash Metal is saying, can you play some Slayer? Well, it, not really on my acoustic guitar tonight, but uh, we will perhaps do that another time, though. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about fills, because I wanted to get, get to that. Let me give away one more thing, and then we'll talk about some fills. Um, let's give away um, 
Colin, great fingerstyle uh, player who was here with us a couple of weeks ago. Colin Hill left a few of his CDs with us. And uh, uh, one of his CDs is called String Stories. Great, um, um, fan fantastic fingerstyle project by one of the great young fingerstyle players coming up. Tom Moore, Thomas Moore has just won this. Uh, thanks, Thomas. Send me your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com, and we will get that out to you. All right, let's talk about creating fills. Okay, so if I'm doing a, a, uh, a song, let's see. Now let's get a little groove going here. One, two, three, four. I want to do a fill over that. This is in the key of C. Now, all I was doing there was noodling around in the key of C. Now, but what makes a good fill is a couple of things. First of all, when the melody is going on, when the person is singing, let's say they have their, their, their melody going on, I don't necessarily want to be filling while they're singing. Okay, we, that's, that's rude, and it doesn't sound particularly good when we're both musically speaking at the same time. So if they're singing, they've got their little melody, and then they come up for air, or they have a long note, then I throw in one of my... I throw in a little fill there. Okay, well, what, what am I doing there? Well, I'm just playing in the key of C over that chord. That was a C chord right there. That's just a C arpeggio, E, G, C. But then I did a, I did a little slide up there. So one of the things that creates good fills is you have, you know, stay in the key and, 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 and uh, do something melodic, but you also add a little bit of spice by a slide, maybe a bend, maybe a, a hammer on and pull off, something like that, to where you can get something a little bit more musically interesting instead of just going, okay? I added a little slide in there. Sliding is one of the most uh, convenient things you can do on a guitar. It's very easy to do, it's one of the first. Uh, techniques I kind of figured out how to do way back when I was in middle school or something. I think I just accidentally missed a note and then went, and I thought, oh, well, that's kind of cool. So if you haven't messed around with sliding very much, here's a good, here's a good exercise to help you out with that. Let's say I'm on the second string, and I'm going to do a C scale, but I'm going to do it up the second string. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And I want to practice my slides. So let's say <clears throat> I want to slide to this D note, okay? I can slide with my first finger from the C to the D. I want to try and go from a scale tone, okay? So I don't just want to go a half step below or somewhere below up to it. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you're going to want to stay within the key. So if I'm in the key of C, but I wanted to slide to a D, I start on a C, and I slide up to the D. Now here's the trick. I want to I want to get to the target note in this case a D, with the finger that I want to land on that D with. So let's say if I wanted to land on that D with my third finger, then I have to start the slide on my third finger. So, but Steve, starting, yes, I have to physically go beneath it and do my third finger, that way I'm in the right spot. If I want to slide to an E, I would slide up with my third finger. So a good way to practice this, let's say I'm going to practice, let's say, working with slides on my third finger. So I'm going to do this scale, but I'm going to slide to every note from the scale tone beneath it with my third finger. So there I went to D, then I hit the D, and then I'm going to slide up to the E, and I hit the E. Now I'm going to slide to the F, but I just have to go to the E one step below. 
I can even do that with my second finger maybe. Now I'm going to go to the G, which I want to be back on my third, so I start at the F. Okay, so I've ended up with something that sounds like this. Finger, slide, finger, slide, finger, slide. It's a great way to practice your slide. Gives you a good relationship boundaries of where you need to go and then pick a different key and do it there. I can do it down. I can go from C, slide down to the B, slide down to the A, A to G. You have to practice these little things. They don't come naturally. You have to build up a little bit of technique and, and uh, uh, you know, not calluses on your fingers, but uh, a, a, a technique ability with your fingers to be able to handle these different slides. I'm on a nylon string guitar, so it slides. But on, an, on a steel string, it would have, uh, on some of the strings, you'd have these, coil, you know, wound strings. So you have to get used to the friction from that. So that's sliding. That's one thing I can do. So if I'm doing a little my little groove here, let's get it back going again. If I just played those notes, it wouldn't be near as interesting. Okay? But when I slide to it, it's more musically interesting. Well, what else could I do? I can hammer on to notes. Okay? So let's say if I'm on a C, if I'll do our C major scale again. I'm just going to hammer on to the next scale tone in that scale. So I'm hammering on from the C to the D, D to E. E to F, F to G, G to A, A to B, B to C. Okay? Okay? I can either, uh, I can also pull off. So if I can go in reverse, I would pull off. C to B. Now hammer on. That technique is I start with one note. And then I really whack with my third finger that D strongly. I can't just set it there. It doesn't work. I've got to hit it hard, like a piano hammer. You ever looked inside a piano? And it, it, it has a hammer that hits that string. That's what this comes from. It's a hammer on. So the idea is that I'm just playing the C, but I'm hammering on to that second note. And because I'm whacking it so hard, it's sounding. And you want to get them as close in volume as you can. Now the opposite of that is a pull off. All right, so if I pull off, I start with a note. Let's say I'm going for this F to the G. Start with my third finger F, but third finger G. But my F is still, um, my F is down. My first finger is down. Okay, so you have to already have this guy in place by the time you're pulling this. And when I'm pulling this one down, I'm giving a little bit of counter pressure on this finger so that I don't, you know, pull the whole string off, okay? So as I'm pulling this one down, this one's giving a little counter pressure up to where I get a good, nice pop out of it. Same thing on a scale. Hammer-ons, pull-offs. Okay. If you just do it a few times and you go, man, I can't do it. Okay, you're never going to get it. Okay, just sit there and piddle with it for 10 or 15 minutes, and you'll get the motion because it's a not a natural motion. I can pull off to open strings. Okay. I can do slides. I can do hammer-ons. I can do pull-offs. I can do combinations. Let's do a hammer-on and a pull-off. Right, so I'm just hitting the string once, hammering on, and then pulling right back off. Maybe I can go up the scale.
piano pull off. So if I've got my groove going here, and I'm gonna play a little lick, and I'll have a, a maybe a hammer on in there. Here's my slide. Here's my hammer ons. What if I did hammer ons and pull offs? Or let's do pull offs. What if I did a hammer on and a pull off? Kind of a triplet. I just have to practice that. These little, these little ornamentations are what make a fill sound, make an otherwise simple fill into something that's special. I can choose which note, you know, talking about slides, I can choose which note of that I want to slide to. I can sl slide to the first one. What if I slid to the D? What if I slid to the E? What if I slid to the G? See how each one of those, same four notes, each one of those has a different flavor that goes along with it. It's a simple technique. Slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs. Here's the last one. This is the most complex one of them all. Okay, so I've done slides, I've done hammer-ons, I've done pull-offs, I've done hammer-ons and pull-offs. Now I'm going to do a different type one. It's a, it's a larger combination of notes. So let's say if I'm on the C, I'm going to go to the note above it, hammer-on to the note above that, the D, D to the E, pull-off to the E, and then back to this C. So it's Da -dee da -dum. It's a little bit awkward doing it on that one. Let's do it on a D. So my first one I start with is at E. I hammer up to that note, to the F, pull off, and then back to the D, my target note. So I'm starting at the note above my target note and doing a little da -dee da -dum, pull off down to my target note. What if I wanted to go to that E? There's my target note, so I have to start on the F. F. All that, well, as soon as I start adding this ornamentation, it opens up your, your fills and your soloing a little bit uh, more. It just gives you more tools that you can use, an otherwise simple progression, and you can get some good fills out of it. I've got one minute. Let me illustrate one more thing. So here's my, here's my progression again. Sliding. Hammer-ons. Maybe uh, pull-offs. a blues note. And we're hammer on and pull off. Let's do that last one, the hammer on and pull off, starting on the note above. there.
practice some options. And if it doesn't come naturally, you have to practice these little scale steps. So practice the slide. Practice the hammer-ons. The pull-offs. Hammer-ons and pull-offs. The larger one starting on the second step. Do those in different keys. Practice them about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, do that for a week and you'll have them down. And, but if you don't, then you'll be forever not having your, your, uh, your hammer on sound right because you just don't have enough physical uh, muscle behind it in order to do that. All right, enough of me yabbering on there. Uh, let's see, John is having a question. Are you hammering on or pulling only scale tones within the given key? Right there, I was doing only scale tones. Ah, occasionally, I might throw in a blues note but I was mainly doing only scale tones, okay? Now, if I was in the key of F, then I would do an F scale, you know? And that's gonna generally work for you. Now, if you're in a blues situation, you have to kind of change that up a little bit. You can use the minor, uh, you can use kind of a, an F blues scale, uh, you can use the mixolydian, what key? If I wanted to use it, if I'm in an F, and I wanna sound bluesy, I, what, did, what did Mr. Steve say? He said you could use that mixolydian scale, so I would use an F mixolydian scale. In what key is F the fifth step? That would be the key of B flat. So um, different ways that you can use those. I hope you guys have learned something tonight with all of, all of my ramblings. Um, we will, our next live lesson, we will not have a live lesson next week because I am... Um, going to be out of town, although I'll we'll be just getting back for next week. I, this weekend, I'm going to be in Boston. So if you are in the Boston area and you would like to catch a lesson with me while I'm actually in Boston, email me at service at mightyoakmusic.com. And uh, I will love to, if we can squeeze it in, I'd love to meet you and, and we can catch a lesson and help you out on whatever. So I'll be up there, you know, uh, this weekend. So if you're in the Boston area uh, and want to get together, let me know. Uh, service at MightyOakMusic.com. No lesson next week, but the live lesson after that, hey, we got a good one. We have a really good one. Um, Fingerstyle, jazz, Merle Travis, sort of uh, amazing player, Jonathan Brown. Uh, he lives here in Nashville. He has not been on our show before, but I've been secretly uh, kind of keeping up with him, and he is a drop-dead amazing player. So Jonathan, for his first time with us, is going to be with us uh, not next week, but the week after that, two weeks after that. So whatever that would be, the 19th, I think, whatever that is. So uh, keep up the great work in your own learning uh, for then. Uh, until then, practice a little bit each day. That's how you get it done. 15, 20 minutes, however much time you can carve out. Better to do 15 or 20 minutes, five out of seven days of the week, than to sit there on a Sunday afternoon and noodle around for two and a half hours. You're not going to get anything done that way. Um, as far as accomplishing, as far as changing something in your sound. It happens deliberately, and even just little bits of time will be able to do it. All right, that's enough of me yabbering on. Let me, let me play something out for you. Um, I haven't really done much playing. I'm going to do, um, this is a great song by uh, Muriel Anderson um, called Arioso, and uh, one of my classical students was playing this today. I thought, oh, that's a good song. I'll, I'll play that one. Um, Go out this week, help somebody with your music, and uh, your music matters. Can I just say that? Your music matters. Your musical journey is, is it, it brings life to you, and it brings life to others that you let in on that journey as well. So don't be, uh, uh, don't be shy with your learning. It's a great thing. Here's Arioso by Muriel Anderson.